Hello everybody, here we are today doing a first round series review between the Colorado Avalanche and the Winnipeg Jets. So before we get started with it, please make sure to subscribe if you're new to me or hockey, whatever the case may be. That being said, let's get on into it. So game one would see the Colorado Avalanche travel over to Winnipeg to play the Jets and the first period was crazy. I'm going to put something on the screen to talk about all six goals that were scored in the opening frame. So in the first 20 you would see Valeri Nashushkin score a goal for the Avs. Two minutes later it's Morrissey for Winnipeg and about four minutes after that it's the Mystikov to make it 2-1 to one Winnipeg. Miles Wood ties it up and Nathan McKinnon gives his team their first lead just to see Shifley even things out and that's just in the first 20 minutes of action. Then in the second period, we would see just one goal, that being a Kyle Lowry goal. And then in the start of the third, it'd be, again, Kyle Lowry with a power play goal. Kill McCord does score a goal for the Avalanche to even things out just a bit. Connor does add a goal for the Jets to make it a 7-4 game. You would see two goals scored by the Avalanche by Casey Middlestead and Kill McCord to make it 7-6. But unfortunately for Avs fans, there's no more goals scored in this game. 13 total, a one-goal win for the Jets. And a game where, of course, you hear a lot of talk about Alexander Georgiev and whether or not he should start in Game 2 as the Avs are down 1-0 in this series. And in Game 2, you would see Gustafsson open up the scoring for just his fourth goal on the season. You would see Miles Wood score for the Avalanche to make it a 1-1 game. But for the Jets, Shifley scores again for this team. And it's 2-1 Winnipeg thinking about building up something here and having a 2-0 series advantage against the Avs. Daydreaming about possibly even winning this series early. Unfortunately for the Jets and something that you would see in this series, the Avs decided, hey, you know what? It's time to score a lot of goals in a period. That's exactly what they did. Lekkanen, Parisi, and Manson all score as it is now a four-goal game by the Avs. And the Jets are playing catch-up after thinking possibly about getting that lead. There would be 11 shots in the final period, but it would be eight by Winnipeg. Unfortunately for them... They wouldn't score any there. It'd be Valerian Shushkin that would add a goal, an empty netter, by the way, for the Avs to be able to pick up their first win of the series and get home ice advantage. This barrage by the Avs is something, like I said, that's going to be prevalent throughout this. So in Game 3, of course, Colorado will be hosting an attack breezy, the NHL veteran that scores a goal for the Avs, and they are looking like, hey, Let's go out there and pick up a Game 2 victory, but in the second period, I believe it was the second, you would see Tyler Toffoli score a power play goal, as well as Morrissey scoring a goal as well. They're up 2-1, to one, and after 20 minutes of play, the Jets fan base is hoping, again, let's get a win, we're able to have a lead, let's just be able to hold on to this small lead, maybe get a goal to make things a little bit easier for us. But wouldn't you know it, the third is very interesting. So in the final frame, being up 2-1, to one, you would go on to see the Avalanche go and score Five goals, two power play goals in the first five minutes, followed by goals by Tori Lickinen and Ross Colton. Devontae's adds an empty netter two, I believe, as the Avalanche go on to win this game six to two. Again, thanks in part to that five goal period, as they have scored 17 goals in their first three games. Carter Hellebuck not having a great start to this series. His team not making life easy for him either. And the Avs have a two to one series advantage. Game four gonna be huge either way for both teams. So in game four, huge game, especially for the Jets. They don't want to go down three to one. They don't want to panic here, but now could be, you know, the time to panic, I guess, if you want to go that route. And there is a little bit more reason to panic as if Terry Lickinen scores a goal to give the Avs a one to nothing lead. Nate Schmidt would go on to score a goal and it would be one to one, but you're feeling, again, very eerie about what the Avs can do. And guess what? Lightning strikes again as the Avalanche have a period where they score three goals. And those three goals involve Valeri Nashushkin scoring a power play goal, Kiel Makar scoring a goal, and then, again, Valeri Nashushkin scoring a power play goal. Winnipeg would lead the shots in the third period. But unfortunately, it'd be, again, Valery Nashushkin scoring a goal. This would be his first hat trick in his career, I believe, up to this point. Even in an article I read, Kim McCarr was just kind of shocked by that as well, too. Nashushkin being a guy in recent years that has played a pivotal role in the Avs, not only being a championship contender, but when other guys leaving, being a guy that could step up and be over a point-per-game player, provide goals in big moments. And the Jets, of course, looking at him, not thrilled at all, because now, thanks to him in part, they are down three to one against the 2022 Stanley Cup champions. So game five is of course back in Winnipeg and the Jets are saying let's just try to get this win force game six and then worry about all that later. They would see a goal early on to give them the lead. So again you can breathe easy but wouldn't you know it 
Valery Nishushkin with another goal, his seventh of the series as the game is tied up. In the second period, it's Yakov Trinin that scores a goal. Josh Morrissey is able to respond, but Atari Lekkonen scores a goal as well too to be able to push the Jets down a little bit with their hopes and motivation. I'm gonna be honest, there's a hint in this fourth and final period, excuse me, the third and final period, there are four goals scored. Care to guess who scored those goals? Well, I will give you an answer. One of them is by Tyler Toffoli, who picks up his second goal of the series, and it's a 3-3 game. It's close. The Jets are hoping to have a little bit of momentum, but you have a guy, Miko Rantanen, that has not scored the entirety of this series, scores one goal and then two goals to make it a 5-3 game. You would see Josh Manson be able to score an empty netter to go on and have this series be done and dusted in five games as the Avs win this one, what, 5-3, 6-3? And looking back at this series, it was clear Winnipeg never really got to play the way they wanted. This was a team that likes to keep teams from scoring a lot of goals, like everybody does, but they're able to go out there and do that against the Avs. No, they were the first team in playoff history to have their first five games where they allowed five goals in each of these games, five or more, mind you, and the Avalanche just looked like they were outright dominant. Connor Hellebuck did not have a great series, as he had an 864 save percentage in these five games. To be honest to him, it's not just him, it was everybody in front of him. This Colorado team looked fast, they looked determined, they are great at shooting the puck, they've got a lot of guys that can score, and again, Valerie Nishushkin, seven goals. Looking at some of their players, like Miko Renton, he only had two goals in the series, they still won McKinnon. My car. Um, did I mention looking in yet? I don't know if I did. There's just plenty of names you could throw out there that could do the part for them. Middle state as well, and names on top of that, which kind of helps explain what happened here. Alexander Georgiev, I do want to give credit to for bouncing back after game one, where he allowed six or seven goals. I think it was seven because there wasn't an empty netter in game one. He was able to have a 932 save percentage over his past four games of the series. And when there was a lot of talk about whether or not he should be pulled, the have stuck with him, and the offense was definitely able to help him out there too as he wins the final four and the abs of course also win the final four to win this series in five so for the jets this feels like relatively familiar territory as they are once again having a really good regular season where they fall early in the playoffs and i'm looking at this team they have one postseason series win over their past six seasons they made the playoffs in five of their past six seasons and in general you can have years where they will go out there and be just a good to great team but they don't get the job done. Here, they really just got dismantled by the Avs as the Avalanche offense was more than capable of being able to bury them with goals. We saw the periods where, again, things really went and got away from them. We saw where the power play for the Avalanche was really good, and the Jets are going to have to figure things out. What do they want to do here? Again, they've already signed extensions for some guys. How do you make this team better, not just for the regular season, but for the playoffs? Because this year, they were on the verge of possibly even winning the Central Division, being one of the top teams in the Western Conference only to lose in five games to the Avs. And once again, you're talking about the 2018 Western Conference final run. I got news, we're approaching closer and closer to a decade every season that passes. It's not gonna be too far removed where you say, man, that was a good run for them. And since then, they haven't done a whole lot. I'm hoping that the Jets can get something going because their fan base probably has to feel very frustrated knowing they were able to have a good year like this year where they won over 50 games just to be knocked out again, super quick and in embarrassing fashion at times. As for the Avalanche, you know they're punishing me because I said that the Jets would win in seven. I originally said that I wanted to go with the Avs, but it just felt like with the regular season how it went in the matchup between Winnipeg and how the Jets were able to get other guys, they were going to be able to get the job done late in the series. Instead, the Avalanche are able to show, hey, we're back in business. Remember last year when we got knocked out of the first round? Those days are over. We are again this team that won the championship in 2022. We are a team that's won the President's Trophy. We are the team that's won all of the division titles. We have guys that are superstars. We mean business, and we just took care of a team that a lot of people thought could go on a deep run in a very short amount of time with a lot of relatively easy wins if you want to look at it that way. I see a team that is very, very, very motivated as they are again looking to win their second championship in this era. And a guy like McKinnon, especially with his legacy and caring about how things are here, you'd have to imagine that these next few rounds, if they're able to get momentum going, and if they play in the Stanley Cup final against another team that could be dealing with especially things like injuries with the depth that the Avalanche have, you should be very, very scared, and the Avalanche could be your 2024 champions. But anyway, what are your thoughts on this series? Colorado, of course, put on a show. Valerie Nashushkin able to have a big role in this. What are your thoughts for the Jets? Do you think this was a lot on Connor Hellebuck? Do you think it was the guys in front of him? Let me know all that stuff down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And go love Hulk, you
Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.